Somehow, if you've made it here, my name is Marker, or Maddie Markers, whatever you would like to call me by. And today, as you may have read in the title, I am doing a review, which I've never done before, but I'm really excited to try out, of the new, or relatively new, because this video is extremely late, Ohuhu Brush Marker Markers. So... If you haven't heard of the brand Ohuhu and you are an artist, you must have been living under a rock. Ohuhu is a very popular art brand and also just overall stylistic and very basic, cheaper brand. Now, even though the prices may be cheaper, the quality of the products is actually really good. They sell stuff ranging from markers to colored pencils to beach towels. So, as I already said, I'm doing a review of the brush markers. And the thing about these markers is that they are dual tip markers, meaning that they have two sides. So that allows there to be more ink and more flexibility to being able to color in your perfect little illustration you have made for yourself. So the thing about the brush markers that's different to the normal Ohu dual tip markers is that there is actually a brush on these markers. So the brush on these markers is extremely nice and it's very flexible. The thing with this brush marker though is that it is very pointed and that's actually something I really like because as someone who does a lot of portraits and smaller drawings in general, that's really nice to get into those little deep crevices that you can't get into, but also when you want to fill an art larger area without filling outside the lines very easy to turn on its side to get a bigger, finer variation in your art, which is awesome. The thing about the other Ohuhu markers is they have a bullet nib, and the bullet nib is, while at the same time, totally awesome, and some people's favorite type of way to use their marker, it is more like what you would see with a Crayola marker or a water-based marker brand. Instead of having the flexibility of the brush tip, instead it has a ball-like nib that is able to get into smaller places very easily, but takes quite a while if you want to fill up a larger area, if you get what I'm saying here. So, moving on from just basic marker knowledge, let's actually get into these Ohuhu markers. So, personally, as someone who is a marker fiend and has over probably over 100 to 200 markers in their whole collection just a ton of markers i think these might be some of my new favorite markers which is a lot quite a thing to live up to especially because i have at my disposal luckily i have some of the more expensive brands and also some of the more cheaper and kind of black markety sounding brands. These Ohu markers are extremely high quality. The plastic on the barrel is not very cheapy feeling, which is surprising because a lot of markers, even sometimes with um, my more expensive markers that I buy, the plastic on them feels very cheap and feels like it could just break with a snap, like if you bend it on your knee. These markers have quite the durable um, casing. So with these markers, there is two sides, both the chisel and the brush. Since I've already gone on to the brush, let's get on with the chisel, or more well known as the broad tip. Broad tip is actually, this is my favorite broad tip that I own. It's able to be quite clunky, but you can also get it to be very, very, very fine. I've gotten some really little lines out of these guys, and they're just 
I, geez, they're lovely. I love them. I personally am someone who really likes using chisel tips. A lot of people who own brush markers, they usually only use the brush tip, but I love using a chisel because I just like the variation and everything. And then something that is very controversial in the marker community is caps fitting on the other side of the marker, which sounds like the dumbest thing you've ever heard, but it's actually really useful because when you're in the middle, imagine yourself, the middle of the art piece. You just finished doing this nice long layer of beautiful flowing pink hair, and all of a sudden you can't find the damn cap to your marker. And the sheer panic that runs down your spine is enough to kill something. You look around for like 50 minutes trying to find this damn marker cap when it was right next to your hand the whole time. Happens every day. I think the reason I bring up this uh, putting on the other side of the cap, the cap putting on the other side of the marker, I should say, is because with the Copic sketch markers, you can't do that. It is completely the same size on both sides. So whenever you try doing it, you just end up Doing that <laughs> there's no way you can get it on there unless you want to break a really expensive eight dollar barrel of a marker which I'm not quite fond of and to say it simply they do fit on the end I miss Kurt Cobain so much <laughs> So now moving on from the actual stylistic qualities of the marker, let's move on to the actual marker. So these now are going to be more of a personal uh, opinions and me working more into what I think of the markers rather than how you may think of them. So no matter what this review is, it's always not going to be 100% accurate because you may like some of these qualities, but me personally, I may not or may. I have broken them down into pros and cons. The first thing I wanted to bring up in this video is that the brush tips are very flexible, which in my opinion is a pro, a flexible brush pit. I think the flexibility is able to get deeper into the crevices of the line work or whatever you're trying to work on, and I find it very helpful and useful to my personal style of art. And now the thing, the next thing about the marker that is actually going on the con side is as someone who draws mostly portraits or if you don't know what that means, pictures of human beings, there is a very, very apparent lack of skin tones. What I mean is if you're trying to draw your favorite anime character or if you're trying to draw your best friend Susan, you may not be able to because there might not be a skin color that is quite good enough for them. Now, let me get into that. Not saying that these skin colors are not correct or not saying that these are not usable. That's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is, in my personal opinion, I think that some of these colors might be a little weird for skins. So, getting deeper into this topic, there is at most, and when I say at most, I mean at most, seven usable and realistic air quotations, realistic skin tones in this set of 48 brush markers. But that is at the basics. That is also with me adding in um, two or three more extra colors that in no way would be healthy looking if they were someone's skin color. The thing about these skin colors also is that even though there is a lack of them, they're still usable and they're still very nice very saturated beautiful colors and they lay down with the most pretty ink you can imagine but they just might not be what you're looking for if you're someone who's really into drawing realistic very uniform beautiful oh that's such a beautiful skin color duh, i like shading and everything kind of face colors you know now on the bright side of having only limited skin tones this also inspires people to be able to do something that i've done with my markers since the beginning of time mix skin tones hold on i know you just cringed what i mean by mixed skin tones is not like mixing and painting where you take two colors off to the side and mix it together and then take a little paintbrush and paint it on 
No, what I mean is a layering of colors and markers. The thing about these markers is that since they're so saturated, and I love the saturation in these, and so juicy and pigmented, that you can take other undertones of colors and make these skin tones really work out for your character. I personally really like layering the purples and the blues over the skins to make them a little more neutralized instead of that very bright orange that you may be used to. And I personally think that these skin tones work really well. For the drawing I did in the video, I didn't use this effect because I just wanted to show these at their most basic qualifications. But it's totally fun to do this and I used it literally just yesterday on a drawing I did with these because I use these like every day. They're my new take, take everywhere markers. They go with me everywhere. The next thing is, I know a lot of people are probably interested in this, is the compatibility with other markers or different art supplies. So like with many alcohol markers, you can't really do these right over some dark graphite and not expect it to smudge. That's just unrealistic. Sorry to break it to you, buddy. But something that you can do with these is they work really well with fine liners. I did a test where I took the chisel end of these markers on top of a wet micron and I like, I went to town. I went to town, I say. And I went all over it everywhere. And it was, at, it barely even bled at all, which is really good because I know sometimes even my Copic colors bleed with these. And speaking of Copics, these markers also work very, very well with other alcohol brand markers. So what I mean by that is if you only have uh, one or two of your favorite new markers and you decide to buy a cheaper set of markers like these Ohuhu markers running for only, I think, $45 USD, which is pretty freaking great if I would say so myself for 48 whole colors, but that's beyond the point here. And you really want to use that new violet marker you just got, but you're worried it won't work with your Ohuhu markers. It's fine. It'll work great with them because I've been using them inside of paintings and all this different stuff together and they mix together like they were basically the same marker. They're awesome and they totally work together. And so the next thing I will be mentioning is the color selection. I think the color selection in these is actually very, very nice. There is a lot of variation of reds and browns and blues and greens. It's very equalized and very nice. And that just makes my, ah, uh, makes my heart warm because I love organization. <laughs> So these markers come in a mesh black bag with a zipper top and I don't really mind this bag, it's not that big of a deal to me, but I know from personal experience from owning this brand of markers before that after a while of some uh, pretty minimal usage and not too much whipping around or going crazy with, the bag will eventually start ripping. It's not that high quality of a bag. It's very, very plasticky. These zippers, they're just kept on by a couple of pieces of thread. They're not gonna actually be able to flex tape, seal it in forever. That's not how this works. It's just some cheap art bag. I, I still like them though. I really like the design actually. It's black and very basic. So my markers came in perfect, no leakage. Uh, broken caps, uh, dry markers, nothing like that. This brand is known for having sometimes some broken markers and other things like that, but I never had that kind of experience with them. So if anything, I more blame it on the delivery services rather than the actual company as a whole. So overall, these markers are lovely. I really, really like them and I totally recommend them to starting artists, old artists, or people who really aren't even artists. They're just a really nice set of markers to keep around and they're also really inexpensive for how high quality and nice the brand is. I really hope you enjoyed this marker review and I hope you found it helpful and are able to use this in the future if you ever want to buy from this brand or buy just markers in general and I hope you found it helpful. But uh, that's about it for me today, Rat Gang. Uh, thank you so much for watching and if you found this helpful, leave a thumbs up, tell me in the comments. Have any questions for these markers? Ask them. Follow me on all my socials and I will see you later.
from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh.